Our project is friction stir welding and what we did was try to model the process of friction stir welding by using a heated rod. And basically our objective is basically to reach 400 degrees Celsius on one side of the rod by heating up the opposite side, all within under two minutes. So what we did is we modeled this rod by breaking up into a hundred different sections. We formed an energy balance on each one of these different sections. Uh, the energy balance just used Fourier's law and Newton's law of cooling, and so we have conduction in, conduction out, convection out, and all those things influence the temperature of each individual rod. And so we took this model, we put it into APM, and then from APM we ran it and it gave us some results. And one of the first things we found is that it was impossible to reach that uh, set temperature, 400 degrees Celsius, within the two minute time frame, that it wasn't going to happen. We found the very best scenario was around 4.8 minutes, and so the best, our new target time became can we make a controller that can do this within 4.8 minutes? And so we took this information that we got from this, put it through Loop Pro, and got a transfer function representing that process. We fit it to first order plus dead time, and it worked great. And some interesting things we found was that the gain was about 0.863, and there was a, a time constant of about 463 seconds, which really shows that it takes a long time for heat to propagate through this rod, which really explains to us why is this not even working by the first place. And a dead time 127 seconds. Um, uh, so for the results, the first thing we did was we made a, a PI controller and we used ExxonMobil tuning rules and we found it, it could reach the temperature but it didn't work very well. And the reason why is because the controller would continue to heat up um, and pro heat would even, even when the controller stopped heating things up, heat would continue to propagate through the system and so your temperature would continue to heat up. And so it, it wasn't able to work because there was such a large time delay um, in this process. And so we needed something else to, to make it better, more robust. So what we did is we looked around a bit and we found that implementing a Smith predictor um, greatly improved it. So what a Smith predictor does, it essentially takes the process um, transfer function and separates it, the delayed portion and the non-delayed portion and it takes the signal from the non-delayed portion and feeds it back into the control the controller input and factors that in to the controller and it also compares the tip temperature with um, with the process and and factors that in so it, in essence what it's doing is uh, predicting what the the process will do before the time delay so it can adjust uh, quicker it's essentially eliminating the time delay in the controller so, so we implemented this and found that it worked quite well. Um, here is uh, 400 degrees Celsius. This is the time in seconds, and it reached it reached the temperature in a, in 92 point or 292 seconds, which is about 4.8 minutes, um, which is about the time that it was physically possible to do. And you can see here's the the controller output. So we have the temperature, and then it drops just past 150 seconds you can see here the heat continues to rise in the rod tip so the controller was predicting um, what would happen um, without the time delay so it worked quite well um, and we were pleased with this but we said so so what happens and how would this handle a disturbance say you know somebody opens a nearby door on a cold winter day and the the tip temperature drops somehow so we took the unlikely scenario of a um, a step disturbance. Um, so we said, okay, we're gonna just do a simple disturbance where the tip temperature drops, and in this case, um, it's 10 degrees Celsius. Instantaneously just drops. So um, the controller was able to, to handle that as well. It, as you can see, it, it uh, brought it back up to the temperature um, now it didn't it didn't reject it con entirely, and if we were to play around with the disturbance, um, we could probably get it to that point. But in the time that we had, uh, we were able to show that our Smith predictor controller is able to handle some disturbances in the in the tip temperature. So, is there? Do you have any questions?